Hi, thanks for joining me on this journey to reconnect with one's initial individual drive for being a photographer. Some of the questions I often hear from other photographers are, I feel that I've lost my way or I'm not sure if I'm on the right track or I'm not sure if the track that I'm on is my true path. If you think back to when you were first drawn to photography, there must have been an initial realization that the medium could provide you with an opportunity to express creativity or to communicate or even to build a career. It takes a lot of work to kind of build momentum along that path. And often the initial inspiration gets lost because you are trying to get the practical together. So it's valuable to reconnect and to reinforce that inspiration that was present right from the beginning. Photography is a broad church and I don't think one can compare, say, between genres. You can't say this car photographer is better than that wedding photographer or that landscape photographer is better than that portrait photographer. But within each field, there's definitely a hierarchy and one can place photography and photographers within that hierarchy even though it is subjective and everyone will have a slightly differing viewpoint. As humans we are programmed to judge. We're always making these little judgments about things like what are we going to have for lunch but inevitably it comes down to one's photography as well and one starts comparing your work with someone else within a similar field. What happens though is with all this questioning it builds up clutter and it becomes necessary to uncover what was there initially as an inspiration for you to be a photographer. It's not easy to always stay in touch with this passion that one had and it's a very fragile connection. So in this video, I'll try to find ways in which one can push back some of the accumulated clutter and reconnect with that initial inspiration for taking photographs. So in this video, let's assume that you've been taking photographs for a while, maybe a year, maybe 20 years, and you feeling a little bit out of touch with why you first wanted to be a photographer and what would inspire you now down that path that you're traveling. I think it's useful to define what I call personal work. Personal work is something that I separate from my general output as a photographer and it's images and bodies of work that I feel comes from a very personal place and that I still get excited about on a very individual level. Possibly for photographers that don't earn a living from their photography, this process is a little less cluttered. Technically, these photographers are amateurs. But that word isn't really appropriate anymore because somehow it implies that because one is not earning income that the pursuit that one's following is, you know, less than those that are earning a living from it. But when you look at photographers like Vivian Meyer or Jacques-Henri Latique, the French photographer, it puts that distinction in perspective. Maybe for the sake of simplicity, I'll just refer to this group as non-professionals. One's inspiration becomes muddled when there's a financial aspect to the equation. Sometimes a career path in photography can take you down a rabbit hole that's really difficult to get out of. The negative side is that you have to earn money and therefore you have to compromise and produce work that fits the client's brief. On the positive front, it forces one to really apply oneself to photography and to become extremely focused. If you're not good enough, you aren't going to earn a living. 
It took me a long time to figure out that my personal work almost never overlapped with my earning work. And I wish it hadn't taken so long because once I'd realized that I was able to see them as different fields that I have to view as completely separate. You know, I earned most of my income from magazines and newspaper work with a bit of NGO and annual report work. What I found was that if I view it, that kind of money earning work from a technical proficiency viewpoint, then I was able to deal with it in a very different way. Over time, the gap between my own work and money earning work became greater and greater. I often thought that if being a bus driver earned enough money and gave me enough time to do my own work, then I'd give up the commercial work. I've met a lot of photographers that have kind of lost their creative interest because the daily grind has worn them down. People maybe who work for newspapers and have to produce photographs of something that they have no interest in. On the other hand, there are photographers that find a particular field that they really feel fulfilled in. They seem to be able to maintain an enthusiasm for their work and they're developing their craft. If I look at some photographers in fields that I've never stepped into, like wedding photography or aerial drone photography, what's another one, maybe car photography, yeah, I look at them as wizards because I have no idea how they achieve the results that they do. And, you know, good for them that they found something that can really sustain their interest and their creativity throughout their career. Non-professionals can also get stuck in a rut though. I've seen photographers who get obsessed by trying to do a particular look in a photograph and they, th that becomes the end goal. But what happens is that they aren't making anything that is personal and in order to get back to that place they really have to put aside that kind of experimentation process. So for all photographers, defining and separating out what is personal work I think is essential. And then you can delve into what is yours and what really has significance to you. Being true to yourself is one of those phrases that has been repeated so many times that it's lost its original meaning. It's the kind of thing you'll find on a Hallmark card. In the photographic context, being true to oneself implies asking questions like, is this image adding anything to what I want to communicate about my subject matter? So guarding your inspiration in practical terms means being brutally honest about your picture choices. This sounds fairly simple when I say it now, but in practice being honest with oneself is not an easy thing. It requires a lot of rigor and a lot of self-reflection. But like anything, it's a kind of mind muscle that one can build over time and you can apply it to your practice. In one of my projects called The Edge of Town, I had an incredibly low success rate. I landed up getting about 10 images that I wanted per year. And some of the images were rejected because they didn't meet the look or the feel of the essay, or they lacked a combination of factors that were important to me. Mostly I rejected superficially strong images because they didn't add anything to the overall communication of the project. Often they were copies of other people's images that I hadn't quite internalized. Robert Frank was painstakingly ordered and rigorous about his work. For his project, The Americans, he edited the 27,000 images that he shot during his year and a half travels around America. Eventually, he got it down to a thousand images. And what he did was print those images, lay them out over the floor of his house and on the walls, and then he would live with them 
So he was basically living his editing process. Every day be confronted by these images and by the choices that he had to make. And in that way, he was able to eliminate the images down to the eventual 83 that he chose for his book. Even really well-known photographers that we know have been exhibited by famous galleries can lose their way because there's an enormous amount of pressure on you and they land up making choices to create photographs either for curators or for their buying audience. The higher you climb, the easier it is to become lost in the hype and the myths of the art world. The word feeling can be a scary word for some, but it's best to make friends with it. Because engaging with how something feels is far more honest than relying on what you think. Your brain just wants you to feel happy. And feelings don't lie in that kind of way. There are various opportunities where you can apply a kind of feeling test to how you're building a body of work. The first is during the conceptual phase. You can come up with an idea that might sound great, but it's only when you ask yourself how you do you feel about that idea that you sometimes can gauge, hmm, maybe this is just an idea I saw that someone else did and they got a good response. Uh, because I don't really have a connection to that idea. If you find that there is a connection, then you know that you have the opportunity to produce work from a personal perspective. The next test is for how you feel about the work is when you set off to do the photographs themselves. Is your head filled with ideas of what you want it to be? or possibly other people's photographs? Or are you allowing enough space to really connect with your subject and see how it draws you in, how you feel about that particular subject? That's when you start making honest photographs. That doesn't mean that you have to walk around in a Zen state when you're photographing. You could have a contemplative response to your subject, but it also could be a spontaneous, immediate response. And it doesn't matter as long as it's your response. Sometimes you can get caught up in the doing aspect of photography. That's the shooting stage, which is fine. But luckily you have another opportunity during the editing phase to apply this, what, one, what I'm just calling for this, the uh, feeling test. You can try fool yourself into thinking that an image should be included, but if you're really honest about how it feels when you sequence it, then it becomes clear that perhaps it doesn't have the same strength that the others do. It either just feels wrong or there's a mismatch. I've been fooled again and again by some superficial aspect of an image that I think is great and that I want to keep it in. And I use all types of excuses. Often it's a case that these images are images that I kind of conceptualize or I've seen before, but I haven't internalized sufficiently to make it my own. Or sometimes I work really hard to get an image and I think because I've put all that time and effort in, I want to keep it. If I think of the Robert Frank scenario of him sitting having breakfast, buttering his toast and he can see images sequenced up on his wall and it's often in those kind of off moments where one's not too focused that one becomes more honest with oneself and then you know saying no well okay that image doesn't work as well with the others or it's just not as strong. Time is one of the best methods for remaining honest with oneself. Allowing space allows you to kind of soften those attachments that you built up during the shooting phase. And without that interference, you're able to move the project forward. Getting back to the original inspirational idea, whatever it is that makes you want to go out and take photographs, that thing needs to be nurtured and protected. 
and it's a spark that was there before you got that first camera in, in your hands and you kind of saw the potential that it could have. And well, certainly before you took your first in focus silhouette with a nice sunset behind. So it's been with you before you started photography, I would think, and it's probably still there. And all you have to do is somehow unclutter and try find it. I hope this video gave you a few insights how to dig out some of that clutter and to make your path a little easier. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Is it over yet? Yes, it's good. It really is. What are they? Well. and find out what the future holds in store. Is it over yet?